Imagine skipping the frustration and agony of learning to play this way. Chord Buddy's got you. Just attach the Chord Buddy right on the guitar and push the tabs to make the chords right away. In no time at all, you'll be able to smash those chords instead of your guitar. Smash songs, not guitars, with Chord Buddy. Well, there you go. We are live. It's Thursday. I want to thank uh, Brandon Stevenson for following us here on Amazon. But Lillian and Travis, welcome. It's uh, Thursday. And uh, as Travis says, uh, we are live on Amazon uh, every Thursday at 9 central time, except when we're not. But today we are. <laughs> Travis, what has been going on in uh, Dothan, Alabama? Well, it's it, hot, Scott. Hot, <laughs> hot. And once again, hot. Of course. <laughs> And, and and a lot of rain. I tell you, about every this time of year, about every afternoon, you have a rain shower. Yeah. Uh, but I built my wife a pull-up station. Oh, look at that! Look at that bruise. Right wow. Oh, you you've yet oh where they did the heart <laughs> oh cast God. last week. Oh boy. It is ugly looking. But anyway, <laughs> I feel great. I my, our sports fans. Uh, we didn't do last week. I had a little slight emergency and was in the hospital for four days but it's a good thing because now i feel better than i've have felt in months and uh so appreciate all the all the kind thoughts out there um but i built her a pull-up station and a dip station uh -huh. and uh so i did that the past two days so because my wife is an avid runner and she gets up every morning and runs about five miles and though when she comes in, then she can go out and do about 120 pull-ups and about 3,000 dips. So, well, as they say, uh, if you see me running, uh, catch the guy that's chasing me. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, if you see me running, you better start running. <laughs> Lillian, what is going yes. on in Muscle Shoals? Well, we just celebrated the holiday this past weekend. We were on the river and. Um, that was a lot of fun. And same thing, just like in Dothan, you're going to ex expect a rain shower at least three times a week at this point. <laughs> um, you know, yesterday they were calling for zero chance of rain and then out, out of nowhere, I heard thunder and it just started pouring down for about two hours. So, but it's going good. It's going really good. Working a little bit and planning the Muscle Shoals Songwriters Festival and, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually playing in Nashville next week, which I haven't done in forever. And I promised myself this year I would play at least two songwriter rounds, a couple of different shows. So I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. I'm going to play with some of my friends in Nashville. So that's it's going to be really fun. When Where's is that, that at, Lillian? Yeah. It's July the – hold on, let me look at my calendar and make sure I'm telling you all right. <laughs> July the 12th at 6 p.m. Well, Where next at? Week. Live Oak in Nashville. Oh, Live Oak. You've ever been to Live Oak on Demombrian? Uh -uh. I think it's on Demombrian, yeah. Oh, really, Demombrian? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to go to a to a to a. Well, never mind. We'll forget that. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> story for another time. Yeah, the green frog. Check it out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been <laughs> yeah, that that place is something else. You know, yeah, you've got well. the green frog, and you've got Tin Roof on Demombrian right there. They're all in that little shopping center, mm -hmm. like right there, but. Well, anyone that's uh, interested, make sure you, you uh, on the 12th, check, yeah. out, uh, uh, check out the show. So that's that's really good. Hey, uh, so I, and I also want to thank uh, Manuel for uh, following. So uh, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, you know, we're open. We've got uh, people can put comments in and ask questions. And uh, but uh, Lillian, you said you were practicing because, of course, we're all we're talking about guitar, learning how to play guitar. And Chord Buddy is the world's best guitar learning system. And uh, Travis will probably give us a little a demo of that. But uh, you said you had, were, had practiced a song. You were ready to uh, share today. Yeah. I mean, we can go ahead and get started. I actually, Let's do it. Um, with planning this, this, 
the Muscle Shoals Songwriters Festival, there is a songwriter that's coming to perform this year, and her name's Sarah Buxton. And I've been following her for several years. And when I was a kid, I learned to play most all of her songs and was so excited that she's actually able to come and play in our event this year, um, which is going to be a lot of fun. But let me pull up the chords. So this is great. Everyone gets live music right here on Amazon. Um, yes. Of course, there's there's plenty of uh, uh, recorded music you can get, Amazon music and so forth, but nothing like live music. There's and, nothing uh, like live music at 9 a.m. on a Thursday. <laughs> or 7 a.m. Like if you're on the Pacific Coast <laughs> like me. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, it is 7 o'clock for, for you? Absolutely. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, we get started early here. Gosh. So this is called Outside My Window. And um, Sarah was, she's written so many great songs. Um, she wrote Stupid Boy for Keith Urban. But this is one of the songs that she released on her album several years ago. Um, but check her out, Sarah Buxton. This is called Outside My Window. Outside my window. I see a rapper singing, sitting on a wire. Wish I knew what he's thinking outside my window. I see a couple kissing, hugging and a loving. Man, that's just what I've been missing these days. Everything is crazy, some things. Are never ever changing. Still need stars when you're wishing that night. Best friend to set you right. A good laugh, a warm bath, and a beautiful song you can sing along to. Good news that'll make you cry. All the little things that money can't buy. And no words, no more. Just a big rainbow outside my window. La, la. Outside my window, la, 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 outside my window. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. Beautiful. So Appreciate that's a great that. song. That little song. Yeah. Yeah. So good. The record's great. So. Yeah. And what, uh, what key is that one in? Or what chord? Actually, what chords so do you play on that? Yeah, you've got a capo down. up. Um. It is in C. So Travis, if that's that way, that would be in C sharp. Well, you're playing in C sharp. Yeah. Because uh, your capo is one. Mm -hmm. George says uh, thank you. Well done. So. And if you don't know what a capo good. is, it's basically like a. You can cheat a little bit with a capo, Travis. Tell them, <laughs> tell them about a capo. If they've well, been and and I'm going to have two explanations about a capo, and the first one is. Is I was totally wrong. In fact, I wish I could find one of my Perry capos. We actually, um, I invented a uh, a capo tuner, uh, and uh, that is a capo and a tuner combined. So I didn't invent the tuner. I didn't invent the capo, but I invented the <laughs> capo tuner. So if you remember the commercials, and, and Lillian, you will not, but Scott will, where the guys walking down the street eating chocolate. Another guy's walking down the street eating peanut butter, and they're both looking down. Now, <laughs> and if they reshot it today, they'd be looking down at their uh, phones. And they run into each other, and they fall down. And one guy says, hey, you got your chocolate and my peanut butter. And he says, no, you got your peanut butter and my chocolate. And so that's where Reese's, Reese's cup came from, you know, <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate. So anyway, I invented that. It actually won an award like everything – uh, knock on wood that I, I invented has, except I did not patent it. Mm. And a big dog in the industry, who I will not mention, but they make strings, <laughs> actually ripped me off and came out with their version, and they and they patented it. Mm. Unreal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was a 
a lesson I learned there about getting patents. Uh, well, we'll, t- we'll tell that anyone that's out there that's uh, got ideas, if you got any inventions, uh, make sure you protect your intellectual property. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things with Cord Buddy, Travis, is that you did get the patent. You got the copyright. Uh, you got all the trademarks uh, mm-hmm. for, for Cord Buddy. And that's very useful because here on Amazon, there are people that are uh, coming from, I'll just say, coming from offshore trying to sell fake Cord Buddies. Uh, so make sure that uh, you always get the right Cord Buddy. Yeah, and, uh, and they are they are everywhere. The, the counterfeits are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so do your due diligence because they look very similar to ours, obviously, mm-hmm. because it's a it's a knockoff of the cord, buddy. <laughs> but anyway, to answer Lillian's question on, on a capo, my mother taught me to never use a capo. She viewed the, a capo as a cheater. Uh, and in other words, so if you if you know G, C, D and E minor, what chord buddy teaches, but you want to play a song in the key of A, well, then you would put the capo at the second fret and play G, C, D and E minor. And you're you're not playing in G because you're capoed up two frets on the neck. You're playing in the key of A. Well, my mother viewed that as cheating because <laughs> she says you'll never learn all your chords if you just move the capo up and down the neck and just play G. C, D, and E minor. So for years, she would not let me use a capo, uh, which was good because I learned all the chords. I mean, I know thousands and thousands of guitar chords now because of that. But as I got older, I came to realize that that is one way of using it. So you don't have to learn other chords. The other way is that so you can play songs with open strings ringing and uh, I wish I had a capo, but I don't. But what I mean by that is if if I'm playing a G chord, all right, so I'm only fretting three strings, but the middle three strings, this one, that one, and that one are actually unfretted. They're ringing open. Okay. So if I play that, but then I want to play a barred G, this is a bar chord G. All right, so now there are no open strings ringing. Every string is pressed down, and I'm fixing to st- <laughs> sneeze. Excuse me. Sorry. God bless you. What I yeah, just- thank you. Thank you. Uh, so there's no open strings ringing. Well, that sounds similar, but it doesn't sound as open and ringy. Mm-hmm. As that, so I later found out that capos are great for for playing songs that's not in the key of G, but you want to have an open sound with mm-hmm. with strings ringing without being fretted, which I know that went over some folks' head or whatever. But well, anyway, it's a, it's a, that's, uh, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we come every week people and, uh, and use people can a ask capo. Those questions. Most people that are advanced players use a capo for the latter reason to get the open sound uh without having to be in the in the key of g which is your open open uh key Mm -hmm. and if you're a singer it really helps i don't sing so it doesn't matter but uh sometimes just being able to to uh uh raise it up or lower it a, a a pitch or two uh, puts it right into your range and makes it easy to sing and you're not straining yeah. and it just sounds better. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, well, and so uh, I, I just noticed uh, Tony has a question here. She says, hi, everyone. How are you doing? I think we're doing good. Uh, I started to use a pick uh, sideways because if I kept it straight on the strings, it would get stuck. Hmm. Oh. Well, well I, sure. I, I haven't experienced that, but hey, Tony, if it works for you, then it works. So as I used to say in the recording business, when I ran a studio, I, I would say, if you, if, if you like it, I love it. So, <laughs> so uh, if it works for you, it works. Yeah. Now, actually, if most mandolin, let me, let me hold up a pick here to, to show you. So traditionally, you, if, if you, you'll notice that there's a pointed end and in, in it's the bottom here. Okay. And then you have two shoulders, I call it. And those aren't as aren't as pointed. So Tony's saying that she's actually playing with these rather than are, are strumming that that 
rather than the, the pig coming in contact with the strings, she's turning it so that mm -hmm. that part's coming in contact with the strings. And that is how mandolin players play. Really? They'll take a guitar pick. Now, they make mandolin picks, which are all square-shouldered on three sides like that. But if, if they're using a, a guitar pick, which I did or do when I played mandolin, you turn it like that, like Tony is saying, rather mm -hmm. than playing with the pointed end, uh, because they will. They'll get caught uh, in, in the strings on a mandolin. Yeah. It, it kind it of bites for me on bit, guitar, yeah. but on mandolin, mm -hmm. it does. Yeah. Well, and those mandolin players, uh, some of them, they get that tremolo uh, playing so fast. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah, and and the round shouldered part helps with that, with that, with the, the tremolo. Mm -hmm. That's really why they do it. It's for the tremolo. She's just turn a little sideways. Okay. Yeah, like you say, if, it, if that works, that's good, you know. And it's all about how it sounds, right? If it sounds good, then mm -hmm. you're playing it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, when it comes, when you throw it back to me, there's a couple of things I wanted to to demonstrate today non-chord buddy um, yeah. all the time we, we talk about chord buddy but let's keep in mind the goal with mm -hmm. chord buddy is what to get off a of chord buddy. Get off of it. Right. Mm -hmm. you know i probably have the only product that i can think of uh uh well training wheels would be the same or bicycle that my intention for you is to buy my product and then to throw it away or <laughs> give it to a friend yeah. within two months i mm -hmm. want you to not be using it now, having said that, there's people that have hand issues or, or just don't give sure. a, a hoot about learning to play guitar. Like Mary at my church, she said, I don't care if I learn how to play guitar. I just want to I just want to accompany myself and sing. And hey, it's a free country. But the intention is to use it and wing yourself off of it so that you're playing on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, well, go but, ahead and show us. Let's, oh, OK, uh, let's take so uh, I and this is uh, my uh, guitar that I use when I play bluegrass cause it's an, it's a composite guitar. There's no wood in this and heat doesn't affect it. Believe it or not, Scott Lillian, I haven't tuned this guitar in probably a year. It You're doesn't kidding. go up. Yeah. It doesn't go out of tune. It don't go out of tune. No, no, because uh, it's a composite. It doesn't stretch or anything like wood does and, and they just stay in tune. So it's crazy. Wow. So, the first thing, a great song, and I taught this pre-chord buddy. It was the first song I taught to people uh, was because I call it the jumping jack. So this is an E minor. It's with your, your middle finger on the second fret, fifth string, ring finger directly underneath it on the fourth string. Okay, so that is a uh, E minor. Now, I call this the jumping jack chord. This finger goes up. This finger goes down. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. well, let's go back. It's just like jumping jacks. Got your, your feet together. Then you got your feet apart. Feet together, feet apart. And that's the only, that, that's the only two chords in this song. So E minor to that chord. There right? you go. So I've been through the desert on a horse with no name It felt good to get out of the rain In the desert, you can't remember your name For there ain't no one for to give you no name La 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 so that's a song by america called horse with mm -hmm. no name have you ever heard of that lillian i've heard of that one okay. it's been a minute but i have heard of that one yeah it was a, a, a scott knows it well it huge huge big hit, hit that was america. a big hit and you know i love that the two chords right two chords. very simple yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's e minor and then jumping jack you know yeah. one up one down. Yeah. The next thing I just want to go over briefly is I, I get a lot of emails when they take the chord buddy off. Which G do I play? 
Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you four different G's and I'm going to tell you the purpose for each one of them. Okay. Now the first G I'm going to show it. It's what my mother taught me first. Cause I was 10 years old or nine when I started playing because <laughs> I couldn't make the other It's thumb on top, middle finger on bottom. That's third string. I mean, uh, third fret, sixth string, and then first string, third fret. Now, the reason I, don't, I say don't do that one is we're missing the, 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 uh, the, the fifth string there. But mm -hmm. what you do is you actually pull your thumb over and mute it just barely. I'm going to try to position it so you can see me barely touch. So it's open. I'm, I'm picking the fifth string now. And then my thumb mutes it, see? Because if I let it ring, if, if I unmute it, I'm going to raise my thumb just a hair. Hear that mm -hmm. discord there? Yep. Getting that A in there, and that A is not, A note's not in there. The only reason for making this, if you have hand issues and you just can't make, make either this chord or you can't make that chord, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're a kid and your hands are too small, uh, hey, make this one, but got to get this thumb over to, to barely touch just barely touch it so it mm -hmm. mutes it out like that. All right, it sound bad. All right, the next way to make a G chord is with your your middle finger on the sixth string, third fret, index finger, second fret, fifth string, and ring finger, bottom string, third fret. That's actually the first way that I learned to make a uh, a, uh, a after the way that uh, my mother taught me and then as I as I graduated up a little bit I say I never do this but actually I, after a year well no I, I actually dropped it I, I was hanging it up yesterday and it dropped and so oh. that that knocked it out a little a little bit that'll make my heart jump when that happens well, these are hard, almost indestructible. I mean, I, I actually left this guitar in the back of my truck for two weeks one time. Couldn't find it. Looking everywhere for it. Found it in the back of my truck, and it had rained all during that time. Mm. The case was disintegrated, but my guitar was in the back, except for the strings had gotten a little rusty. The guitar was fine. But anyway, so we got we got this, this G here. All right. A lot of people learn to make this G. It's a good G. The only reason I would make this G is I, if I were going to do what's called the bluegrass G. And that's when you raise your ring finger one string and add your pinky where your ring finger was. That's called the bluegrass G. And in, in technical terms, it's taking the third out of the top end and adding a fifth, which makes it... Uh, brighter stronger versus so which g do i recommend it's the hardest one but trust me this is the one you want to make and this is why all right so it's going to be middle finger top string middle finger fifth string pinky bottom string okay why do we want to make this chord? It makes going to the C so much easier. The way I teach this is you play a G, and then we're going to go to a G7. These top two remain the same. Put your index finger on the bottom string, uh, bottom string, first fret, and then take this finger off. That's a G7, and I'm going to tell you how that sounds in a minute. Then from a G7, all you do is lower these one string a piece. See, I move it from here to here. And then this, this one going up one string. So from a G7, these go down. This one goes up. All right. So let's do it with Amazing Grace. If I go Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. That sounded fine. Mm -hmm. Nothing didn't sound bad except for, for the singing. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to add the G7. 
see, check out how much e better that sounds, and it makes it easier to go to the C chord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. So, didn't that sound better? You go from a G, da da da, da da da. You're adding that seventh in there. Now to go to my C, check it out. Down and up. And then back to G. So that's the reason to use this one. And one more, there's a pedal move called. So you're keeping these the same and you're going to part of the C chord right there. One of Garth Brooks' biggest hits uses this move when he goes. Sometimes in our lives, you know, that song by, by him. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that, that's my time for the day. I've, I've used, we got three minutes left and I've wasted most of it. Ah, no, that's good. You know, no, it's, uh, we, we love, uh, uh, just getting those little techniques, those little things that uh, come on. And and Chord Buddy, just to remind everybody, we and we've got uh, the Chord Buddy in the carousel. There's the uh, combo, the youth combo. There's all kinds of songbooks that uh, are available. And I just kind of scroll through those. Uh, as well as we've got uh, Shark Tank, where uh, many people, millions of people, learned about uh, Travis and uh, Chord Buddy and found out that it was all manufactured right there in Dothan, Alabama. And so this is a USA product uh, right here. No supply chain issues and guitars and Chord Buddy learning systems available uh, right here. But you can watch the, uh, uh, the episode and uh, we can talk about those later. But if you want to listen to uh, the story, we've got the podcast, the Chord Buddy podcast in the uh, uh, carousel there as well so you can listen to that um, but Lillian what uh, fun thanks for uh, sharing a song today absolutely yeah it's always absolutely. fun and just to remind people uh, you were on American Idol and I was uh, and got to share what what was your what was the first song that you uh, played on American Idol so I played an original song mm -hmm. it was called country boyfriend um played an original and then keith urban said he wanted to hear something else so i played where the black top ends in front of keith urban which is his song and, and that <laughs> oh, wow. was so fun that i mean I, I get to say that i i played a keith urban song in front of keith urban yeah. so that was that was a lot of fun but yeah those were my two <laughs> two songs which they didn't show where the black top ends they didn't show that on tv they showed the other one but yeah 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 Oh, that's mm. great. And Travis, are you, uh, is there a podcast re recording session today? Yes. Yes. We didn't do one last week because I was in the hospital. So we're yeah. definitely doing one today. Well, good. So uh, episodes are there. I, I threw in the carousel. Uh, I've got a couple of podcasts that are out there as well on Amazon. So I've got those available in, um, in, the, uh, in the carousel and a couple of the books that I wrote because why not? You know, it's a, uh, this is the great thing I love about Amazon is, is that we can put uh, podcast books. It's easy to do, uh, easy to write and publish. And I encourage people uh, to uh, write a book, tell a story. Uh, maybe it's one of the, maybe it's the stories that uh, your parents told you as kids or you told your kids or your grandparents. Uh, maybe it's your family history. There's some great stuff to share. And so, uh, but with that, let's go back and just uh, say, uh, Lillian, thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, thank you, guys. And uh, hopefully it. we'll have you back next week. Sounds and, good. Uh, I'm not, hopefully I can line up a guest between now and then. So. Hey, that would be fun. Yeah. You know, we, we'll, right. uh, we'll, that, this is one of the great things about guitar is uh, you almost always find somebody that plays and you can definitely learn something from somebody. Yep. And so yep. uh, Tony says, uh, Travis, I hope you're feeling better. You know, oh, I am. Thank you. Good. I am. Yeah. All right. And uh, 
George says, thank you for what you do. God bless you and have a beautiful day. And uh, I think with that, that's a, that's, a, that's a good way to end. So thank you, George. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Lillian. And uh, we'll see everybody in uh, uh, online here next week. Take care. We'll see you Imagine skipping the frustration and agony of learning to play this way. Chord Buddy's got you. Just attach the Chord Buddy right on the guitar and push the tabs to make the chords right away. In no time at all, you'll be able to smash those chords instead of your guitar. Smash songs, not guitars, with Chord Buddy. About the Chord Buddy, not only is it so easy to use, it's also an instant party. And let me prove that to you for a second. You like big and rich music? You want to come on the road with us? You want to be in a band? If you got a Chord Buddy and you can push the red button and the blue button, you can play Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. Check this out. Well, I walk into the room, passing out hundred dollar bills, and it kills and it thrills like the horns on my Silverado grill. Red button, I buy the bar a double round of crown. Everybody is getting down in this town. Ain't never gonna be the same. Red button, and I saddle up my horse. Blue button, and I ride into the city. Red button, make a lot of noise. Blue button, cause the girls, they are so pretty. Riding up and down Broadway with my old studly boy And the girls say, say horse, ride a cowboy Everybody say, say horse, ride a cowboy Woo! Party time with the Cord Buddy Get yourself a Cord Buddy and have some fun, people It's time So I'm just gonna wind it down a little bit. It's been uh, it's always great every week to have Travis and nice to have Lillian join us here on Amazon and uh, just share about Chord Buddy. We're gonna show one last video here that kind of shows how the Chord Buddy works as a learning system. So you just saw John Rich showing how to play a song with two buttons, two chords, using your guitar and Chord Buddy. And there's a, a, a plenty of guitars out there. Uh, under beds, in closets, if you've got one and you haven't played it and you'd like to learn to play, Chord Buddy is a great learning system. And we just saw how to play songs uh, with two chords. And uh, But let's show you how you can go from using the Chord Buddy and wean yourself off of that, as Travis says. Take the training wheels off. Show them we're going to play a video. Uh, this is part of the learning series part of the videos that uh, come with the Chord Buddy learning system that shows you how to start removing those tabs and using your fingers on the strings as you learn guitar. Well, all right, guys, this is a point in the system of Chord Buddy where, as my daddy would say, the rubber hits the road. Uh, up to this point, we've been focusing on right hand rhythm, timing, different strum patterns. We've learned four different strum patterns. We've been focused on learning some songs, getting some finger dexterity going. Now it is the time to start removing these tabs and start making the chords on your own. This is an exciting time and I'm glad that we're here. All right, so what we're going to do first is how do we remove the D tab? All right, the best way to do it, and I'm going to keep this at an angle for you to see it best. You may want to lay it down in your lap, but I'm going to keep it up. What you want to do, you want to press the, the blue one down so you get it out of the way, okay? Now, this is, I, this is the way to take it off with it on the guitar. Uh, from the factory, these things are in there pretty tight, so you have to pull it pretty hard, okay? So, but you're not going to break it, so don't worry about that. So push the blue one down to get it out of the way. Lift up slightly on the red tab and give it a pull. And there you are. Now it's out. So, let's go over how to make the D chord. So you want to refer back to your book, and there is a uh, diagram there of how to make the D chord. There's a hump right here. Okay, this hump is here for a reason. 
That is so that you can get your index finger under the hump and it falls perfectly onto the G string. Okay? That gives you enough room to get to your others. See that right there? So, to make the D chord first, put your index finger on the hump and then just slide it off and it will fall directly on to the G string. Then place your middle finger on the second fret, first string, your index finger, I mean your ring finger on the third fret, second string, and then you again you strum from four down. That is your D chord. 